All right, here we are, phase two processing. First thing we're going to do is use the visual summary that they give us to highlight, underline, annotate, star, and mark all of the key details supporting the main idea. Okay, so you got your yellow highlighter, you have your pencil and your colored pens or your colored pencils or your colored crayons. A mid-ocean ridge is an underwater mountain chain on the floor of the ocean. Okay, mid-ocean ridge, underwater mountain chain. Where are the mid-ocean ridges? Hmm. Aha, here we go. Mid-ocean ridge. Okay, underwater mountain chain. We didn't say that, so underwater, U-N-D-E-R. Water, W-A-T-E-R, mountain, M-O-U-N, T-A-I-N, chain, C-H-A-I-N. Highlight that. Underwater, mountain, chain. On the floor of the ocean, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge has the same shape as the coastlines of Africa and South America. Okay. Let's see, did we put that... No, we didn't. Okay. So, mid, M-I-D, dash Atlantic, capital A-T-L-A-N-T-I-C, capital A-T-L-A-N-T-I-C, mid-Atlantic, shape, S-H-A-P-E. Africa, let's put Africa on the right because that's what it is in the picture. Capital A-F-R-I-C-A equals South. Capital S-O-U-T-H America. Capital A-M-E-R-I-C-A. So the Mid-Atlantic Ridge has the same shape in South America and Africa. During seafloor spreading, ocean floor is created at mid-ocean ridges. Okay, so at the mid-ocean ridge, plates are moving apart. It's called a rift valley. Okay, it's spreading. Where did we use the word spread? Okay, over here on the front, we talked about how plates can pull apart or spread. The record of magnetic reversals proves that tectonic plates are moving apart at mid-ocean ridges. Okay, so let's find that part about the magnetic reversals. The magnetic field can reverse, and those parallel, those parallel bands matching shows that they are moving apart. How do we know that they can reverse? Because magma has iron, and the iron acts like a compass to a line. Okay. This part about thin sediment is kind of important. This part about the ocean floor being young at the rift is also important. It feels like we're highlighting everything, so we're going to have to go back and make more annotations to pick only the really, really important stuff. Okay, Earth's lithosphere is broken into seven large plates and numerous smaller ones. All right, so there are various plates. They vary in size. The plates slowly change shape as they collide and pull apart. Okay. Let's see. Where did we say that they can change? Plates collide. They can fold, buckle, push up. Let's see. When the pressure builds up, they can break or shift suddenly, and that's earthquakes. Now, what vocabulary words did we see? We saw seafloor spreading, tectonic plates, and plate boundary. That was the big ones. Okay, so let's use our red pen, our red colored pencil, our red marker. Let's highlight like the main things, right? Kind of like they're showing here. What details support the main idea? Okay, main idea. The crust is divided into large moving plates. Let's find anything about large moving plates. Well, we have plate boundary. 
large moving plates. Sea floor spreading, we know that's helping them move. And tectonic plates. Okay, so we're going to try to use all three of our vocabulary words. Plates, moving plates, large moving plates, large moving plates. Okay, plates collide. Large moving plates. They can pull apart. Okay. Large moving plates. Well, where do they move? Where do they pull apart? At a mid-ocean ridge. Okay, large moving plates. Plates moving. Large moving plates. Large moving plates. Here we go. Moving apart plates. Large moving plates. Okay? Now, the second sentence of our main idea was something about evidence includes earthquakes, volcanoes, and mid-ocean ridges. Earthquakes, volcanoes, mid-ocean ridges. Earthquakes, volcanoes, mid-ocean ridges. Earthquakes, there's mid-ocean ridge. Volcanoes, mid-ocean ridges. Earthquakes, volcanoes, mid-ocean ridges. All right, so now we have stars next to the things that were specifically in our main idea. So what we're looking for is highlighted, because that's what the book thinks is important, and a star, because that's what we think is important for our main idea statement. All right, so let's imagine, what would we say? We would say something like, the crust is divided into large moving plates. There's evidence for this, including earthquakes, volcanoes, and mid-ocean ridges. For example, we know that there are tectonic plates that pull apart, move together, or slide past one another. We know the plates collide and build up pressure. When they break or shift, suddenly, that causes earthquakes. And they're pulling apart, pushing together, or sliding past each other at a plate boundary. We also know that the seafloor is spreading because we have found mid-ocean ridges. A mid-ocean ridge is where the plates are moving apart, creating a rift valley underwater. We know this because the ocean floor is very young at those rifts, and the sediment is very thin there as well. We also know that um, the magnetic field has been changing because the iron and the magma acts like a compass. So when we look at the parallel bands in the ocean floor, we can see the reversals. When it matches on both sides, we know that those plates are moving apart from each other. We also know that the plates... Uh, oh, there's no star there. We don't need that. Earthquakes, volcanoes. So earthquakes in L.A. and San Diego and California in general, let's put capital C, capital A, and highlight that. Earthquakes in California help prove that the Pacific and North American plates are pushing together. Okay, now that was a lot. We're not going to write all that down, but that is how we look through our notes, think in our mind, and figure out what's going on, right? <laughs> kind of like the curve of forgetting. We took our notes, but we can forget. We highlighted, annotated, and processed our notes, but we can forget. So phase three, connecting our thinking, we're trying to connect all of the stuff that we highlighted and annotated to the main idea. Then we're trying to connect all of that to something we know inside of our brain, something outside of these notes, something in history, maybe something we've seen in a TV show or a documentary, or maybe even a movie, but it has to be historically accurate. And that helps us write our summary. Okay, so we just did phase two, processing. We highlighted important key details. We annotated key details that support the main idea. And we used the summary that they give us. And we used our main idea. And now we know what the most important things are. So we can sit down and start writing. If it gets too long, we can just 
kind of shrink it and cut out details to make sure we have only the most important details, the ones that we have highlighted and starred. So if you have a highlight and a star, that's super important. That's what we want to make sure we get in our summary. That's what we want to make sure that we connect thinking to. All right, good job persevering with the growth mindset. Roar Wildcats.